Hi everybody! I'm here today to talk about the riots and the attacks that took place in Brasilia in the 8th of January of 2023, so that is uh, Sunday, two days ago. The riots left a huge destruction in the city, in the governmental buildings, lost art pieces, paintings, original pieces of the constitution of historic furniture, we lost materials that are necessary to use the court, the National Congress, etc. It was shocking, heartbreaking, and something that will leave profound scars in, in our history. And we are resisting. The government is taking concrete measures, and the situation is under control right now. And it will continue to be under control, everything points to this direction. But still we do have to talk about this and it's very important that people from everywhere in the world is aware of the extent of the riots, the cooperative behavior of the police and the answers that we're providing to these events here in Brazil. So in this video I want first to talk about the, the events that led up to, to these riots and then enter into the riot, what took place in what is now known as the Brazilian capital, uh, a Brazilian version of what took place in the US following Joe Biden's election. And then uh, we'll talk about the answer that the new elected federal government gave to these events, these shocking events. You probably know that Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva was elected president in Brazil. He was the president from 2003 to 2000. He had two mandates. So 2003, 4, 5, 6, and 6, he ran again for president, re election. He got it, so 7, 8, 9, 10. <laughs> then he could not get re-elected again, because in Brazil we do have this limit of two re-elections in a row. His successor, Dilma Rousseff, was elected president. She also won two mandates, but she was impeached in her in the, in the beginning of her mandate. We say that he, she didn't even manage to, to start her second mandate properly. Dilma Rousseff was impeached, and following the impeachment on the next ele election, Jair Bolsonaro was elected president. He was elected president in a context where there was a very big discredit in the political system in Brazil. Um, judge Moro was, was the judge responsible for the Lava Jato operation, which is known as the car wash operation, an operation that uh, investigated corruption, a cor very big co corruption scandal in Brazil and now we know that the operation had a lot of flaws, it did not respect due process. In this process, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, former president of Brazil, he was arrested and so he could not run for the presidential elections when Bolsonaro won, he stayed in prison for a significant amount of time until there were revelations that were called the car leaks. If you remember, Glenn Greenwald was from The Intersect and he was the one <clears throat> that wrote a lot about the WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. And he was also the person in Brazil that wrote about the car leaks, showing that the judge, Moro, had had direct contact and conversations in Telegram with the prosecutors of the case and he was coordinating the prosecution. So the judge was coordinating how the prosecutors would make their case before him himself, who would later on decide on the things that he himself was already coordinating with the objective of putting Lula in arrest. The case was taken up to the Supreme Court of Brazil, the STF, and also to the Human Rights Committee at the UN. The Human Rights Committee at the UN decided that the rights of Lula, they were violated and that the operation and the judgment that resulted from it did not respect the, the guarantees. 
that should have been guaranteed, uh, respected. So Lula was released from prison and he ran for the presidential elections of 2022, ultimately winning the elections. Some people went in front of the headquarters of the army asking for military intervention. And they actually were there from the moment when Lula won the election. So this is on the end of October. Months, Christmas, rain, sun, no matter what, they are there. They are financed by people that have a lot of money, many businessmen, people involved in agriculture and agro... In the agri agribusiness. In the agribusiness. Um, they are there asking for a military intervention, which means the return of a military dictatorship. We knew that we were not dealing with rationality. Those were not rational requests and rational arguments were not uh, working. Because their fears were irrational. They appear to be convinced that Lula and those that vote for him, defend him, are human rights activists and the universities and even the Pope, they're convinced that they are communists, and that those that know the truth about the danger of communism in Brazil, they have to take the streets and they have to have the help of the army to save the country from this very big communist threat. It is a very difficult situation. Inimaginable things have taken place. You can see some videos that I'm gonna put here where many of those people that have been protesting against the results of the elections, they are singing the national anthem to, to attire. Why? We don't know. I don't think they know either. You can see also videos where a man that is protesting against uh, the elections again, he was taking place in this movement that closed down many roads in Brazil. And the police eventually was acting so that the roads would not be blocked anymore. And eventually, in some day, this man was still on the street and he wanted to avoid that a truck would continue his way. He wanted to protect the blockage of the roads. So he, according to the truck driver, driver he jumped in front of the truck while the truck was starting to, to drive. And he continued like that. The truck driver says that he stopped the truck and asked if the man wanted to get off the truck. The man said no. So the truck driver continued until where we don't know. And this has been his. This man became known as the truck patriot. Uh, many of these people are wearing the the Brazilian national team T-shirt uh, during the the World Cup. Many of them were also very frustrated because they said that they were being that people thought that they were just people that cheered for Brazil while they were patriots protecting the country. So we already had a lot of events that show that we are not dealing with rationality here and we, we have to be careful because this can be extremely dangerous. And all of this is driven by social media. Those individuals, they receive um, mass messages and WhatsApp, Telegram, videos that become automatically the truth they believe that the university is leftist and perhaps communist as well and that those that study history they actually do not know what history is those that know what history is are those that are not connected to universities and that will show you the true story of brazil the true story about the world and they pay a lot, a lot of money to receive these courses about the real history, the real, the reality about politics, the reality about everything, about the Beatles, about the Beatles even, about Net and Netzes, um, and they 
argue that Nazis were actually from the left, it reached a stage in which the German embassy in Brazil had to make uh, an official note explaining the history of Nazism and how it was not connected to a left movement. Well, all of this tension in Brazil, it leads up to a moment in which, after being elected, Lula and his vice president, Alckmin, they go to the Supreme Tri Electoral Tribunal in Brazil to, to, for the ceremony called Diplomação. And Diplomação means simply that the Electoral Court provide, it acknowledges that those individuals are gonna lead the country, the executive of the country. It is a ceremony that always takes place every time a new president is elected. And a few hours after the diplomação, people that uh, were protesting against the results of the election took over the streets of Brasilia, they put fire in cars in many places of the city and they tried to pull a bus from a viaduct and they were stopped. They only... that was just not concretized because the police managed to, to stop them. So we have this situation in Brazil. But things are seeming, in a way, to calm down. Lula's inauguration day was calm. Security forces managed to, to guarantee security for everyone. A man that was trying to put a bomb in inauguration day was caught days before. And it was uh, such a big celebration. We are going to have another video about this. So it seemed like everything was calming down. There were less and less people in front of the headquarters of the army. And then we reached January 8th. Around 100 buses arrived in Brasilia, taking around 4,000 protesters, or how do we, call, we call them, bolsonaristas, pro-Bolsonaro individuals that were pro wanted to protest in Brasilia. The government knew that this was gonna take place, but still, there was not enough preparation for what could happen. The Bolsonaristas, those pro-Bolsonaro uh, protesters, they generally do not like the Supreme Federal Court, which I will call the STF. And one of the justices working in the court, Justice Alexandre Moraes, is the president of the Supreme Electoral Court. This happens in Brazil. One member of the Supreme Electoral Court is also among the many members of the court, is also a member from the STF, from the Federal Supreme Court. And that member, in this case, at this time, is Alexandre de Moraes. And Alexandre de Moraes had have, has had a very active role in combating fake news and establishing limits to guarantee a safe and as safe as possible election. So, those protesters, they have a particular foil against Alexandre de Moraes. Those protesters, they enter into the Esplanada and they had the cooperation of the police. The police was there, but theoretically they were there to guarantee that the process would be, would be a peaceful one. But in fact, we have now a lot of footage where the police only took pictures of the individuals that started a riot in Brasilia. They took pictures, they filmed, they left, they bought a coconut water, they told them that they could just go to the governmental buildings and do their thing, there was no blockage, and they did not act. Those individuals, they marched in Brasilia and they entered into three, three governmental buildings. The first was the SDF, the Brazilian Federal Supreme Court. If you have been there, you know that the court was projected as the whole Brasilia. It was projected by the architect Oscar Niemeyer. It has a lot 
of glass in the entrance. It's basically glass and some pillars. All the glasses were broken. The individuals involved in the riots, they enter into the courtroom where the court held, uh, holds a uh, plenary section, so sections of the whole bench. They enter into the courtroom. No one was there because the court is now on vacation. And they destroy the courtroom completely. Every chair is completely destroyed. They took all they took uh, art pieces of the courtroom, they destroyed it, they broke everything. It's 100% destroyed. There's basically nothing left. They also went to this room where the court receives foreign authorities, so government officials from other countries. And it's a room that is very historic. It has historic furniture, presents that were received by foreign delegations. And the protesters, they thought that that was the room where Justice Alexandre de Moraes worked. And they started screaming, this is where Alexandre works, this is where Alexandre works, look at what we are doing with it. They destroyed it completely, everything. The, this room had this crystal mirror that the court liked very much, which showed your image completely without any distortion. And it was so prepared for this kind of fancy meetings, completely destroyed. A man even went in front of this camera took that someone was filming, took off his pants and started defecating and peeing in the room. And the protesters also went to the National Congress. sculptures, original pieces that we received from centuries ago. One of the original, I read about this, the original clocks that we, that's, that we, the, Port, the king of Portugal and Brazil, João VI, received from France. And it was a clock that was made for Louis I don't remember which Louis, but around the time of the French Revolution, completely destroyed. It's and we don't know how much we're gonna be able to to restore. They also entered into the palace where the president works, and a and the destruction was already also very significant. The damage just in the Senate it's estimated to be around four million reais and that means between seven to eight hundred thousand euros this is just in the senate and this is not it's not only the the damage in terms of money that resulted for the country there were thousands of people They took the streets and they were standing on this very famous uh, part of the National Congress where asking with those big papers asking for a military dictatorship while the military police did nothing 
and those involved in the riots, they were filming and saying, see, the police is with us, the police is with us, the police came here to talk to us and said that everything is okay, that they just want to make sure we are safe. And that was what happened. So how did Brazil react? The Minister of Justice, Flavio Dino, reacted immediately, as well as the Supreme Court. Right now, we have 527 people arrested and 599 people that were involved in the riots. They were allowed to leave the detention, but judicial prosecution will take place. We have 100 companies that have had their assets blocked because they appear to be linked to activities of financing those acts. The chief commander of the military police in the federal district where Brasilia is has been, will be prosecuted. And the same for the chief of the secretary of the public security, which who was the former minister of justice of Jair Bolsonaro, the governor of the federal district who was extremely negligent in the riots he was taken away from office for 90 days and the governor is a supporter of Jair Bolsonaro as well besides this what is taking place well Bolsonaro is currently in the US he is in Florida and there has been discussions concerning whether he should be extradite or more precisely perhaps expelled because there hasn't been any criminal charges against him concerning the riots yet and so an extradition request was not made but he could be expelled the situation got to a level in which it, it, the risk for bolsonaro in the u.s became significant after all the u.s had the the events the invasion of the capital right uh, right after the election of Joe Biden and not to act in this moment to be um, uh, to to be omissive and the repetition of this facts but in Brazil could send a very wrong message in this context the the family of Bolsonaro who is also in politics they consider that the risk for him to stay in the country in the US were higher than coming back to Brazil. So while he had considered staying in the US for one month, he decided to come back as soon as possible to Brazil. Bolsonaro went to the US just before the inauguration day of Lula, and that is uh, that is understood as a strategy used by him to avoid giving the presidential the presidential sash. This was a strategy so that he would not have to give it to, to Lula. So, yes, Bolsonaro is now coming back to Brazil. Those incidents, they are very serious. They will, they do leave a, a fundamental scar in the history of our democracy. The message that is that the government is sending is that this attempt for a coup d'etat attempt of taking over brazil with the hope that the army would join and the coup would be would start it has not succeeded and it, it will not succeed nor will there be amnesty for those that engaged in those violent acts against the state as a whole against democracy the acts were violent they were violent against our cultural heritage against our history against democracy and against uh, the officers that did try to control the situation we have footage of some police officers in a horse that were trying to limit the actions of the individuals taking place in the riots and those uh, officers they were attacked a horse was attacked the images of the riots is shocking but the democracy and the republic as a friend of mine said the republic resisted and we are continuing to resist 
we this fight is this fight for democracy and for truth is not over and we are not dealing with a rational opposition we're not dealing with rationality and we have to learn how to tackle how to tackle fake news how to tackle this collective delirium they are about one third of the country and we need to take back sanity to to those individuals to the country we need to take concrete actions to to understand this phenomenon to answer in a timely and concrete manner this is not a phenomenon that is restricted to brazil it's taking place in other places as well so i think that it's we have to talk about this together take uh discuss the experience of each other and come up with a good and sustainable solution thank you for watching the video don't forget to subscribe and like it the video if you if you liked it <laughs> okay bye